control the Jew. Con three on Jewish people? What are you doing? This is, it's, it's, I mean, it's bad enough that fascism is on the rise around the world, but on Twitter, on a, on a portal to pour that in as if Jewish people haven't had it hard enough. I've interviewed you a so number of many times. times. I have never seen your eyes well up oh, in I'm anger sorry. like that. I literally, yeah, I woke up that. and was, I thought, my grandparents? Yeah. could feel good. You've not talked about this before. I have not talked about Why this the first time. Why is it now the time? Why is it now? Because of the stigma that we have on it as black men. Oh, Welcome to this edition of The Take. I'm your host as always, Kendra Diggs here on this Thursday. Thursday, October 14, 2022. Thank you all for watching The Take here on The Take. Join in the conversation using the hashtag Take Hill Connect. And don't forget, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe is caring. Tell a friend, call a friend, hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a thing here on The Take. Like I said, we are the hub of pop culture, and we got a lot to get into. Let's get started with the big story. The big story this week is Kanye West continues his rant. He continues his rants from last week when he stood out there and wore a t-shirt saying white lives matter. Like I said, all lives matter, but start with black lives matter. But Kanye West didn't forget the, didn't forgot the memo. Well, Kanye West continued to lose his mind by saying anti-Semitic stuff like this. When I say Jew, I mean the 12 lost tribes of Judah, the blood of Christ, who the race, the people known as the race black really are. This is who our people are. Defcon 3 on Jewish people? What are you doing? Yes, on Twitter and stuff, Kanye West is losing his mind and he is trying to set racial overtones real bad. And I hope he gets the help he needs. Even um, celebrity Jamie Curtis, who appeared on the Today Show, here's what she had to say. Cotton free on Jewish people? What are you doing? This is, it's, it's, I mean, it's bad enough that fascism is on the rise around the world, but... On Twitter, on a, on a portal to pour that in as if Jewish people haven't had it hard enough. I've interviewed you a number so of many times. times. I have never seen your eyes well up oh, in I'm anger sorry. like that. I literally, yeah, I woke up that. and was, I thought, my grandparents? Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's, it's, it's just abhorrent. Yeah. It's abhorrent behavior. I hope he gets help. I hope his children get mm -hmm. help from him. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's terrible. Yeah, it's been a, it's, it's, it's caused a lot, a ton, a ton of reaction. And, so and if we aren't reacting, yeah. who are we? Yeah. yeah. Who, what does it say about people who aren't reacting? Yeah. Who woke up right. and read that and thought, oh, what are you having for breakfast? Yeah. Jamie Curtis, uh, a fellow Jew, her grandparents, um, what they had to endure, she was thinking about her grandparents. I think sometimes Kanye West doesn't know his own power and he's trying to be tainted and he got to be, like I said, stopped from that because when you do that, you kind of build on the vibe. You sort of like how someone else is trying to do and stuff when you think they was good and then they turn out to be evil. It's evil people around you. You just have to sense it and know and feel that energy. You know, some people may not get it, some people do get it, and you can sense it and feel it. So I hope he gets the help he needs, because he's going to really need it real bad. 
All right. Sadly, in other news, Angela Lansbury, the one who played on Murder She Wrote, Jessica Flexion, or one of the most beloved and or uh, acclaimed actors of stage, film, and television, has died in her LA home uh, a couple of days ago. She died in her sleep. She was 97 years old. Let's look back at the career of Angela Lansbury. Actress Dame Angela Lansbury, whose career in Hollywood and Broadway spanned 75 years, has died at age 96. A statement from her family said, Dame Angela Lansbury died peacefully at home in Los Angeles, just five days shy of her 97th birthday. The British-born actress is best known for playing the intrepid detective in Murder, She Wrote, the longest-running detective series in the history of television. She was also a legendary movie star, playing the evil mother in The Manchurian Candidate. Well, you're going to look like an even bigger idiot if you don't get in there and do exactly what you're told. And of course, she was the voice of Mrs. Potts in Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Lansbury made her movie debut in the 1944 movie Gaslight earning her first of three Oscar nominations. I'm not going to sleep in the same room with her. See the way she looked at me. She played Elizabeth Taylor's big sister in National Velvet. Last June, in a special tribute, she got a special Lifetime Achievement Tony, but was too ill to attend. Look inside the balloon. She continued working into her 90s. One of the final roles of her illustrious career, the balloon lady in the 2008 Sequel to Mary Angela Lansbury led a remarkable career. She will be missed, and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with the family and friends of Angela Lansbury. All right, um, no celebrity news this week. Um, we get to talk shows, talk shows. On to on the view. Joy Behar celebrates the big eight zero. And she gets a surprise from this power couple. Best for you, like this cat, who's a pain in the butt, but what can we do? We, we talk about him all the time. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. Go ahead, just show the clip, please. Who is it? From the whole Biden family. Happy birthday, Joy. No one is better named than you. You brought joy to so many of your friends and admirers with your trademark humor and that smile that lights up the room. And as a former teacher, I know that there are so many students out there whose lives you've changed. You speak your mind, you speak from the heart, you stand up for what you believe, and you do it with warmth, humor, and authenticity. And you and your friends at The View started the national conversation 25 years ago that's still going on. You've enlightened us as well as entertained us. Both Jill and I are grateful for the time we've spent with you over the years, and, and we're delighted. We're delighted to call you a friend. Your light fills people's homes and hearts every morning. Thank you for sharing it with us for so long. We hope you have a terrific day with your wonderful friends and families, and your beloved View family as well. And we wish you many happy returns. Happy birthday, Joy. It's hard to return. Yes, Joe Behar gets surprised from the President of the United States and his wife, Dr. Jill Biden. Joe Behar looks good for me at 80 years old. I know 80, 80 looks so good and stuff. And Joe Behar knows how to keep her age. I know she don't even look like it. She looks like she's in her 60s, to be honest. She put herself 20 years back, so good for her. Uh, this is what Joe Behar had to say. Yeah, Joe Behar embraced the welcome. She She's more combative than ever, so Joe Behar knows... I think it too of um, just keeping the drama going. I know how Joe Behar rolls. All right, on the Taryn Hall show, Taryn sat down with David and Tamla Man to talk about world mental health. Let's take a look on that. That you, for two years, were battling depression. Every time, even when you walked out, you're smiling. She's regal. You've got the finger there, smiling. 
but you've been hiding so much behind that smile. They would ask me, are you okay? Good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm a fixer. Like, let me fix it. I'll fix everything. Everything's good. Everything is fine. As long as everybody else is good, I'll figure it out on my own later. That was literally killing me. When did you know something wasn't right, if, if that's the way to put it? I don't know. I just know one day I realized I don't feel right. And something is, is off. And the only way that I could find relief was I would go in my office and just go to sleep. Just, and that's the only time I just could feel good. You've not talked about this probably. I have not talked about Why this is the first time. Why is it now the time? Why is it now? Because of the stigma that we have on it as black men. As a community. Yeah. As a community. And quite honestly, I was embarrassed. You were embarrassed? I was embarrassed. I was ashamed because, you know, I'm David Mann. I make the world laugh. But I, I, once I started to see how much I could help people with my story of depression, because that is something that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. What did it feel like in those dark days? Like that, you know, and I want to say... He at, if I can say this real quick, he looked at unhappy. So I kept asking the question. So you saw it. You it's saw like the I light. see that something was there, but I didn't... I wouldn't have put that on it. I would have never said that about him. You would never thought it was depression? No, no. What did you think that. it was? I was just, you know how you just have a moment, like you get tired, fatigued. Because when we go, we go, and it's like so much. He's thinking of what's next. When we're all asleep, he up thinking about what, what we about to do. So you thought do. maybe burnout. Yes, yeah, like tired. I said, it's like I was drowning. Oh. But nobody knew I was drowning. The only way people were going to realize that I was, ooh. Okay, yeah, it's, cool. It's, it's a, yeah. It's touching yeah. for me because I haven't. Yes, David, man, talking about his mental health, like he was taking care of everybody else, but everybody went look checking out on him and that took a toll on him uh, like I said mental health is that you can um, be the strongest person and then you can be have the lowest self-esteem and lowest everything so you had to take toll of your mental health some people um, try to you know persist but keep that in mind and um, David Mann is a strong dude so big ups to him we'll be back with more don't go anywhere this is the take on connect TV stay tuned Welcome back to the tape. I'm your host as always, Ken Dix here on this Thursday, Thursday, October 13th, 2022. I got it wrong last time. Thanks for joining us. Join in the conversation using the hashtag Take Hill Connect. And don't forget, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe is Ken. Tell a friend, call a friend, hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a thing here on the tape. Let's get started with the political rundown. On political rundown this week, a LA City Council president, um, Resigns after all your leaks of her racist remarks. Take a look. You know, folks, like when that's going, he did call me. He wants to have breakfast with me. Um, Where's that come from? I haven't. I just said, hey, we need to talk. You supported him from the. I don't worry, I got him. Um. Uh. So when you start seeing him line up, I did go to the Whatever the kids are doing, I'm on. It's like the oddest thing, all the, it's like black and brown on this float. And then there's this, this white guy with this little black kid who's misbehaved. Este niño has no, he's, they're not doing that, yeah, no, they're not doing, the kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the float, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. And I'm just like, oh my God. He's raising him like a little white kid. Wow, this woman right here needs to be resigned. We heard that she has resigned. So kudos to everyone who leaked that. You know, when people don't troll who truly they sell are, it's going to come to the light. So be real and be ready to um, be checked. I'll tell you that right now. 
Some people think they you you fooling folks. No, you fooling yourself. Be honest. Also, too, Alex Jones getting sued for a defamation case for lying about the Santa Hood trial. He is just despicable, and that's it. He's despicable, and he needs help. And gets the help that he needs, really, real bad. But Alex Jones getting what's coming to him. All right, on the reality show clip now, unfortunate news. Former reality um, a Real Housewives star Cynthia Bay and her husband Mike Hill have decided to go their separate ways, um, get a divorce, and still want to remain friends. Everyone knew that it was two years, and everyone knew that if you watched the show when they was together, it was doomed from the start. When she was, when he had a lot of female friends, and she was kind of trying to approve it, but she really didn't approve it. So it ended up being that way. So, not that be. All right, on the Kardashians. Kim says that she had sex in a, with Pete Davidson in front of a unique place in honor of her grandma. Take a look. You know, it's so crazy. Pete and I was staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel last weekend, and we were sitting in front of the fireplace just talking for hours. And I was like, my grandma told me that you really live life when you have sex in front of the fireplace. And so we had sex in front of the fireplace in honor of you. I know that's really Not creepy. in the lobby. Not in the lobby. <laughs> How creepy to think about your grandma before you have sex. I know, but I was younger <laughs> once. I was younger once. Wow, you had sex in a fireplace on your grandma. Why would you tell your grandma you had sex? You know what? The Kardashians, that's what they do. They business oriented minds. They just sick, twisted, and business oriented. I'm not shocked, no surprise. That's how I be sometimes. Ugh. All right. And finally, the viral V of the week. Many of you may remember Hornswoggle from the WWE. Well, he was in an indie show, and he decided to do this. Well, he choke slammed that dude. Hornswoggle is sick. He, look at him. Can we look at him one more time? Well, yeah, boy, it is, but uh, it turned out to be that way. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for watching this edition of Take on this Thursday, October 13th. I've been your host, Kendrick Dixon, so long, and we'll see you next time for another edition of The Take.